Hey here, Phil, the Animal Rock. It's time to talk about something very dangerous now. Something that would cost you your client. Electrocuting a giraffe. <coughs> no, I promise you, it's serious. Not stupid like this video here. I've been making these portfolio reviews for a while now, and I keep seeing something that really bothering me a lot. An elderly home rave party. <laughs> no, here it is. This looks like a nice original website, right? 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 Wrong. Wrong. A circle following a courser. 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 Designers are magpies. <laughs> Designers are magpies. They like shiny things. Sliding typography. 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 A designer magpie sees a shiny thing, gets amazed, copies it to her website. Another designer magpie comes, sees a shiny thing, uh, gets amazed, swallows a doorknob. Typography animated on scroll. Typography animated on scroll. Typography animated on scroll. Animated on scroll. Animated on scroll. Almost every other portfolio website you come across looks very similar. Why? Why are you doing that? It's so easy to make your portfolio original and striking, and you don't even need design skills for that. We'll look at how this is possible in a second, but first, here is why being a designer magpie is really dangerous, apart from accidentally swallowing a doorknob. Here's the thing, something might have happened to me. After looking through all of these portfolios of various designers, developers and agencies, and looking for the ones that stand out so that I can show them to you in these Web Developer Reacts videos, I think I might have entered the mindset of a client. So the danger is this. There are two dangers, actually. Danger 1. A low mercantile materialistic one. Let's say you finally decide to create your portfolio. And naturally, you go and look for some inspiration online. Only look at the first couple of portfolios, get very inspired by the first things you see, and create something similar. The problem with this is that you have not looked at enough portfolios and created something that's not just similar to what already exists, but also similar to something similar that's what already exists, which is also something similar to what already exists, that's 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 something similar to what already exists. In other words, you created a piece of sh in other words, you created Will Smith, uh, you created Agent Smith. You created a portfolio that is similar to too many portfolios out there and is only capable of hitting people in the face with its unoriginality. In the best case scenario, a client who's already seen too many portfolios like this will just walk past. In the worst case scenario, a client experiences a mental breakdown, quits his job, sells his house and the wife, goes to Chechnya, trains to become a radical Islamist terrorist, teaches himself how to make a bomb out of a dead raccoon and a cleaning powder, loses an ear in an uncontrolled explosion, gets rushed to a hospital and COVID ambulance without brakes, falls off the cliff onto a roof of a top secret nuclear facility, scaring the guard and triggering the simultaneous launch of 150 nuclear warheads resulting in the end of the world in a blazing radioactive inferno. And speaking about the end of the world, there is another danger of creating something unoriginal. Danger 2. An existential one. What are you bringing to this world with this? What is your purpose here? Why did you choose to be a creator? Why instead did you not venture to become a photocopy machine? You can fix this. But how? How do you build a portfolio that stands out and makes a difference? Even if design is not your thing. This is actually not as difficult as it might seem. Disclaimer. Apart from having looked at hundreds of personal portfolios, I also did time in a notorious British mental institution called Central Central Artists College of Art and Design. And before that, in a top secret Soviet design university where if you file an exam, you'd be sent to do foraging in North Siberia. Solution 1. When you don't want to design. If you are a designer, you can also do it, but shouldn't. Stealing. Steal other people's designs. <clears throat> but how do you steal and not get caught? Paralytic gas. <clears throat> no. Don't steal the designs of the websites. Steal something completely unrelated. Steal a visual system, not the actual thing. To keep it looking professionally designed though, it's important to embrace the medium and follow the rules of the system that you've stolen. In other words, don't try to make marble out of porridge, 
and chocolate out of shit. For example, if you stolen children's drawing, don't try to make it into a 16 chapel. Follow the rules and become a child. And one other thing is that it's very important to remember why you're stealing what you're stealing. For instance, you're stealing from children because you believe that being less serious and childish leads to great innovation. Or maybe you've always felt like your mental age is 5. Or you can't stop asking questions and learning more and more about the world. Or maybe you just like screaming in high-pitched voice in public uncontrollably and throwing food at your mother. Creating an original website. Solution number 2. For designers. First, look at as much stuff as possible. Watch YouTube videos like these ones and go to websites like awards.com. The more you see, the better you feel that landscape and will be able to see that whole thing from the perspective of a client. And then when you're finally ready to design, steal. But don't just steal, try to avoid literal interpretations. You're a designer. Design. Don't steal the entire system like we've talked about before. Get inspired by it instead. A car that literally looks like a fish is stupid and inconvenient. It doesn't bring anything to the world apart from awkwardness and inconvenience. But a car that's designed or engineering is inspired by a fish is a completely different story. It can create unexpected innovation and new visual languages and in general contribute to the history and evolution of design. And additionally, if you create a website that nobody has seen before, you can submit it to the site like awards.com yourself and gain more exposure and clients. So, apart from not missing out on potential clients and preventing a global nuclear war, I think it's important to remember what is your purpose here and what are you bringing to this world as a creator, as opposed to creating yet another millionth copy of a fancy-looking shiny doorknob. And I think the most portfolios in this video are doing a good job with this. Thank you all very much for watching, like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't, hit the bell if you haven't, don't forget to look up and see you soon.